emphasize the difference between rigid stem centrally located cups and the more maneuverable low profiled cups, I'd like to demonstrate using this pelvic model. If we place this baby straight occiput anterior and at the outlet, you'll see that the flexion point, three centimeters forward of the posterior fontanelle, a long sagittal suture, essentially is my presenting part. So I could take any cup on the table, rigid stemmed or not, and place it on that spot and essentially get that baby delivered with little effort. As you know, Babies who need our assistance rarely present straight occiput anterior and at the outlet. But let's make it a little more realistic and put it in a low station and add just slight rotation to, so it is left occiput anterior. Now this is still a delivery in which I'd let my intern do, but notice what it's done to the presenting part and what it's done to the flexion point. Presenting part now has become mainly the right parietal bone and the flexion point is actually moved down three centimeters along sagittal suture away from where we can get access by using a rigid stemmed cup. If we place that rigid stem cup on this spot, you can see that we're essentially placing it on the majority of the right parietal bone of the fetal head and we're trying to drag the baby down in an oblique fashion, not in the axis of the pelvis, which is going to require more force and increase the chances the cup comes off and causes scalp lacerations or abrasions. Now some people say that you don't give this cup enough credit and one of the benefits of the soft design is that you can collapse them. And perhaps you could collapse the cup enough that you could move it so that you could get it over that so-called flexion point. The problem with that is this. There's not a physician in this room or listening to this lecture who would pull in that direction to deliver this baby. We obviously all pull along the curve of caris or along the axis of the pelvis, which is in this direction. The only problem with that is, is rigid stemmed cups are designed to be pulled at 90 degrees from their attachment. So as soon as we try to pull in the axis of the birth canal, we end up popping the cup off and causing abrasions. Now the beautiful part in the design of the maneuverable cup, what it allows us to do is we don't have to leave the cup in that position on the presenting part. We can actually slide the cup down over the flexion point and then let the stem follow out of the introitus and because it's not a rigid stem, as we pull in the axis of the pelvis, it doesn't create a vector of force that's gonna pop the cup off, but essentially is gonna guide that baby's head along the axis of the birth canal. So in the occiput posterior position, Again, the presenting part becomes the anterior fontanelle. The posterior fontanelle is all the way back here and the flexion point is just three centimeters forward here. So by using a rigid stemmed cup, we're essentially forced to put it here, which is way too far forward over the anterior fontanelle, which does nothing to the problem of this baby. The problem with this baby is it lacks flexion. It does not have chin to chest mobility or movement and so it presents a very large anterior posterior diameter of the fetal head to the maternal pelvis which is going to require more force to bring across the perineum. Now even with an incredibly ugly recto episiotomy that mom could never forgive me for, I still couldn't get that cup in proper position. The beautiful part of the maneuverable stemmed cup is what it allows us to do is not leave it here on the presenting part, but actually push it back over the flexion point and then the let the stem follow like a tail so that when I provide traction in the axis of the pelvis, I'll actually encourage that chin to chest movement or flexion of the fetal head that'll present the smallest diameter of the head to the maternal pelvis and allow the normal process of labor to take place.